Hi guys, it's your favorite mystic, the siren says, and welcome back to my commentary channel where I speak about movie, TV, and soon to come books, and everything that I like, dislike, and the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything all throughout and in between those frames of media. So, I have come to the conclusion that I prefer to be bored in this show than to be angry, because you know, like before when you were upset, it was more like, oh my god, and you were almost unsure how you thought about it, like, this show has always been written badly, like, let's not play. Season 1 was a little bit better than the subsequent seasons after, but it's like... I don't know, at this point, I just feel like I'm upset because I just don't like anything, and even though there are little things that have changed and i'm going to admit that here there are, you know certain people are acting right more now than they did before it's just kind of like too little too late or wrong man you know like i don't really care to see some of these girls act right for these men you know um so i'm not really gonna go scene by scene like i usually do because i just uh, i want to just talk about everything as it comes into my head just talk about the themes that i want to discuss um disclaimers these people are not real we're just talking about tv show that's where all the passion or lack thereof at this point comes from if you have something to say put it down below i have absolutely no problem and um i'll respond be rude to the characters don't be rude to me okay i'm not mad at y'all's opinions i talk about the opinions that other people have versus mine all the time and i'm not saying that they're dumb i'm just saying i don't agree sometimes that's it you can say you don't agree and say why we don't gotta you know tussle in these streets so we're not gonna tussle all right so i figured we should just get into danny immediately because i just want to get this out of the way i was worried last week that she was gonna bring up preston and say that preston switched up on her and she didn't which i appreciated because that would have been a lie and then it would have been obvious that the writers were trying to throw some propaganda to ruin preston to the audience so i appreciate that she brought up preston because that was her last relationship and she just kind of left it there she focused more on jonah and it led back to her college days her days being a booed by her um football player boyfriend which i'm not shocked by that i'm a little shocked that she didn't tell her friends but i only say a little because danny tends to use her humor her wisecracking and her i'll give you advice as a shield to not talk about her problems so you know um one thing i didn't really appreciate um it's an unpopular opinion i'll get through this quickly um when she was talking to tony and you know at first tony was just being okay fine she's in a mood let's leave her alone and then she decided to be honest with him that you know something happened in therapy i you know terrible memory from back in the day i didn't know i had and he seemed kind of miffed that she didn't like want to disclose what was going on with him and i was just kind of confused because why should she have to tell you anything sir this is what i was saying before like check back some of the latest episodes right i said before that i feel like if danny goes through with this therapy thing right she is going to like you're gonna see another side of her that you might not have wanted to see first of all but second of all you can't just expect her to be like oh i went to therapy now i'm all open and i'm gonna tell you everything and i'm gonna want to be around you all the time because therapy is a happy experience like no no bro no i think it's really interesting that like she wanted to be alone for like obvious reasons you know what i mean and for some reason it's almost like he couldn't understand that she wanted to be alone am, am i the only one who's a little bit confused by that I, i'm not okay 
let me play devil's advocate. Look at it on both sides, right? All right. Both sides is he just didn't want her to be alone. He just wanted to be with her or whatever. Fine. I understand that. I'm not trying to hate on him for no reason. I'm just saying it looks like she's she's probably been going to therapy for the last two days. This is the second time she hit a breakthrough on the second time. Right, maybe second or third time. It depends on how long the session was. It's probably the second time, right? She hit a major breakthrough and now she's feeling raw and she wants to like deal with how she's feeling by herself. And she's not closing herself off. She immediately told Sabrina what was happening, which is what I was saying. Like, she might not trust him immediately, but she trusts her girls, is what I was saying. In an episode that you will see, um, I did a chat video where I said, you know, the girls should go to group therapy because I feel like they would have no issues being open in front of each other. But yeah, he just felt kind of like, so you won't even let me come over. And okay, I know I'm probably wrong, but it's it's a little, it's giving me a little bit of sleaze, okay? And I'm saying I'm probably wrong because that's probably not what the writers wanted to come across. But it's like, what is he going to come over and do? She's not going to tell him what happened tonight she's just forcing herself not to push him away by allowing him to come over which is fine i guess that's progress but he's just gonna come over rub on her feet suck them toes and then get to woohooing like that, that's literally all that's gonna happen so i don't like why why can't she get like a day alone and then tomorrow right like like don't let two days pass like give her a day to process and then come the next day with the energy of okay look i gave you a night to do what you had to do if you had to cry if you had to scream if you had to punch something if you had to make a phone call i gave you that day now you just give me an update tell me if you need more time or that you are okay enough to act semi-normal and for us to go back to semi the way it used to be that would be an adult conversation to me not you can't even spend a day without me i don't care that you just revived trauma you need to let me back into your place like i know that's not how he came about it but that is the undertone that i was getting in that conversation and i feel like from somebody who has been in therapy it was a very weird conversation to see him do that in my personal opinion i'm gonna walk away from this part now sabri bri and you know what let me not talk about sabrina because i just remember something i want to bring it up right now tyler perry you're joking with me (laughs) okay (laughs) one part that i was laughing at not even because i enjoyed it because it was so incredulous to me that i had to laugh i (laughs) the see what maurice at the club and grayson why tyler what 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 topsy-turvy world are you in are the allegations true i'm asking for a friend because at this point, there is obviously an agenda that, that you're trying to push. There is obviously an agenda, bro. So Grayson comes in. Grayson looks good. How come you couldn't find a replacement for Jordan that looked as good as Grayson? And unlike Air Jordan, who can't act straight to save his life, this nigga is supposedly curved gay in the show. And the way he was talking to Maurice, like I could see him talking to a girl that same way. Like it wasn't even given. How are you doing? Like Tyler, why is Maurice? This is what I was talking about. I- I'm going to make a video about how some of the men on this show have better characterization and better character development than the four girls. Don't you guys see what is happening here? This is crazy. It's not only about Grayson, it's about Maurice as well. I'll get into that in another video, but I don't like that. That I, that was weird. Like, why? But like, I think the first guy was fine. Like, the first guy wasn't really that cute, but he wasn't like ugly. I feel like that made a lot more sense to me. And I don't really understand why he has to be the one who's trying to be different a little bit and, you know, actually changing to some extent other than all the other girls who have also been through stuff and then he gets like the gorgeous guy supposedly it could all blow up this show is this show so i'm never looking at things thinking it's completely unfair but some of the undertones is just really weird to me like okay but i just thought it was funny that like grayson acts more straight than air jordan i I really can't do this i really can't Oh, guys, please don't make me. Don't make me do this no more. Don't make me. 
So, uh, next with Sabrina and Paige, I'm not going to get into it too heavy. I have a video about it coming out. I already um, filmed it. I'm just going to edit it and I'll give it all to you guys. I don't care. In this episode, they have done more of the posturing of showing that Paige is a backstabbing, uh, palm-colored complected woman who you know even if sabrina isn't doing anything wrong is gonna try to find a way to underhand her for the job of course that is corporate life you can't necessarily trust everybody that you work with you are not going to convince me to side with sabrina on this if she gets the job she gets the job great plot armor good for her i guess but within the confines of everything that she has done and everything that she deserves i am not rooting for her i'm not really rooting for Paige either because they're, they're trying to make her like obviously unlikable for reasons that we're not even going to talk about but guys you need to be able to to, to peep what they're doing because they're doing it heavy and i have no idea why they're doing it like this like i don't get it um here's what i'll say may the best woman win i guess so next up right i see her with rich and i'm dying laughing <laughs> because you know rich is talking about his expansion you know bachelor stuff you know like oh i'm i'm a bachelor i'm going to live my best life i'm gonna have so much fun here you know i'm gonna build up a brand new fuel spot and i'm like there's barely anybody in here on a daily basis you're doing that well that you can break ground to build a whole new building are you siri look whatever works for him works for him i guess but um yeah i'm not i'm not like you know super impressed with that because it, it doesn't really make much sense to me he his place is super small and it's not like there's lines going out the outside like you could have tyler team you guys could have easily simulated that it's small but it's bustling and you guys refuse to do that so not falling for it next um sabrina decides to you know sort of cut him off a little bit and say i'm gonna freeze my eggs he immediately the light behind his eyes dies as he realizes that she said yes to him but she still wants the baby like she didn't just immediately give up the baby thing just because she loves him which is like bro what did you expect this is why i had the conversation before of sacrifice versus compromise and the fact that there is a difference there is a difference between sacrificing meaning giving of something that you shouldn't have to give up versus compromising which is okay you might be a little extra about this let's find a compromise you know what i mean and i feel like one thing that i that i really dislike about this show is that they try to show sacrifice as compromise so sabrina should just throw away her dreams of having a kid because she found a good man savannah and he ain't want no kids now mind you i don't really want no kids either but here's the thing it cannot be that you're dating this person for three six months whatever three six five mafia and you just find out that not only does he not, not only does he not want kids he doesn't want marriage and he might bend on the marriage thing if he likes you enough but he's a hard no on the kids right like hit the light didn't die in his eyes when she brought up marriage he's just like oh marriage i don't know i was married so maybe but maybe not but with the kids it was like yeah nah nah and he had a good reason he grew up with a lot of siblings and because he was the oldest he had to raise all of them i can relate to that I didn't have to completely raise them, but you know, you still kind of have to raise them, watch over them. Like, you know what it takes to raise a kid, at least domestically, if you don't know what it takes financially. 
by by growing up and being the oldest of a lot of siblings so you already tired you don't want that no more like when you finally get out on your own and you leave the relief of not having to think about other people girl you lucky he thinking about you <laughs> i feel like she should have picked somebody else just off the strength that that you know if you really want this you can't compromise on something like that in my personal opinion you can't really compromise on religion political affiliation and children want or not want you can try and some people have tried and are in marriages where they're kind of like apathetic towards each other but to me that's not the type of relationship that will last so his the light that's behind his eyes and he sort of just like calmly dismisses her the same way that tony did but in a in a way more sad monotone way and she feels dismissed she's walking away she's sad he's rushing back to work when he had nothing but time to talk about his development site and it was just sad because it was like i was really hoping that sabrina was going to get what what she wanted here she was the only person who i cared to see the relationship dynamic on all the other girls i feel like they just don't deserve relationships right now but like okay maybe sabrina kind of deserves one um but here they are and you know what this is a storyline that is needed right but i really hope that it doesn't end with either sabrina changing her mind or rich changing his mind and before i forget rich did bring up that um it's a good thing that she decided to freeze her eggs because if they don't work out she'll still have a chance with somebody else i i was laughing so hard i was like bro you did not just say that you did not just say that it's a good thing that she's freezing her eggs because low-key you might dip out and if you ever dip out (laughs) at least she ain't squander her opportunity that's crazy when he said that i was like wow that is crazy i wow just wow (laughs) oh my god anyways so to move on from that let's talk about karen for a second I know a lot of people are like Karen completely deserves this because she has caused scenes and I agree with you to a certain extent um a lot of the moments were not necessarily too public but there were a few moments where she just ran up on him like so I see what y'all are saying but here's the thing Zach is supposed to be better than that where does the hypocrisy end right so because Karen was crazy and you know unrelenting and stubborn zach is allowed to go just as low just because karen went low okay i don't have an issue with zach going low but here's what we're not gonna do we're not gonna have zach treat karen the way that karen treated him and then still have karen be the only bad guy in the situation one thing i'm sick and tired of is y'all putting zach on this pedestal the show is doing it too the the show is trying to have you guys forget everything that he ever did and karen low-key brought it up a little bit today she's like oh i know this man who 304 this man 304 ain't telling me that i sleep around do you guys remember that he cheated on her multiple times what um relationship woes only count if a man puts his hands on a woman that's the only part of a relationship that counts as you know not being good if he cheats it's cool or because she decided to cheat back she got her lick back in that way that that it cancels it out like i'm not saying that karen is right but i'm gonna need y'all to stop acting like zach is perfect i feel like y'all have more of a level-headed mind towards towards like danny and preston like y'all don't put persons on a pedestal y'all just know when danny is wrong why can't you do the same thing with karen why can't you just know when karen is wrong instead of blaming karen by putting zach on a pedestal like he's an angel he's not an angel bro if Hayden ever finds the right button to push, Zach is going back to jail. And not because Hayden set him up, but because he did uh, some criminal activity. I had somebody talk to him the other day about how, like, you know, everything that Zach has ever been through, 
people pushed him into it his brother pushed him into the stuff that 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 made him a juvenile delinquent it wasn't him it wasn't him i'm like oh my god what is wrong with y'all so personal decisions don't have anything to do with it we always have to fall under to peer pressure i was young girl <laughs> i've had people around me that been like do this smoke this try this f this. like you get that when you're younger and i'm going to give this to zach his environment was not conducive to fighting off peer pressure but my self-esteem wasn't always good either and people with low self-esteem are also um able to fall under peer pressure and i still didn't fall under majority of the peer pressure you also don't have peer pressure. you also have stuff in the back of your head where it's like hey you in this shop maybe you can take this people go through that all the time they ain't got money they're like oh you should take this you don't have to do that but let me be fair and talk about karen because i know y'all gonna be like why y'all hating on zach when karen karen is a hypocrite she talks too much she's rude right and all of the girls do um juggle men let's say so zach has all right to ask he does but you can tell that this isn't the right time when fatima looked crazy for being okay with him asking the way that he asked fatima looked like she was a little bit crazy that's how you know that you know not everything is right you know what i mean so i think that he should get a dna test because i don't think it's his baby let me reiterate that and karen had many faults in that relationship as well but i think it's really weird that a guy who didn't have any ambition for himself right is seen as the angel just because the girl was verbally mean to him the the most of the relationship can do y'all remember the fact they were together for years on and off meaning zach kept coming back can, can we hold zach accountable for that why did he keep coming back to a woman who would verbally abuvu him why oh you know he's a he's a victim damn he's a bit she never put her hands on him to the point where fatima thought that she might have and he was like she would never do that so obviously there are lines that karen hasn't crossed i guess karen is not perfect but can we start putting equal blame can we start doing that please can we can it can it stop being that zach is this angel and can this show stop giving zach all the character development and start to spread it equally I'm starting to get sick and tired of seeing Zach on my screen because I need to see the other girls progressing and moving forward for real. People are saying they're seeing more character development with the girls. I'm just seeing set dressing, but we'll see. I'll give it to episode 10. I'll give it to episode 10 to see if I see some major improvement because it's been over six years and Zach's change has been steady and climbing everybody else's change has been flip-flop and non-existent and you cannot tell me otherwise bro you can't tell me otherwise anyway i'm so sorry i spoke about this long i don't hate zach i hate people's perception of zach it's really weird to me and it makes me watching him unenjoyable because i can just see y'all drooling over him like oh whatever and the nerve of fatima to come at andy about red flags with jordan ma'am you're considering marrying a whole crap whatever all i'm saying is everybody's a hypocrite in this show and i'm just sick and tired of it at this point now i kind of like trey i kind of like him a little bit and i kind of like how karen is with him but i don't really like the connotation that karen likes fixer uppers that she likes broke boys because she wants somebody to fix and to build up girl you didn't build up zach it's what you trying to fix i'm so confused by that narrative i don't like that narrative and it just really makes karen seem, seem a little strange so clean that up hopefully you know um it comes out later that trey owns the delivery service or something like that because girl stop 
Um, yeah. What else? I guess we could talk about Andy, Gary, and Hayden, but nothing is really happening. They're just trying to get the wheels in motion. So nothing big is going on there that we care to see. Next episode will be when Danny meets this man's kid. Um, from the framing, it looks like she was trying to get freaky with him and the kids were there, um, which I spoke about this. I spoke about the fact that Danny is a, a single girl, a party girl mentality type person. So I highly doubt that she, you know, she doesn't, she didn't have the wherewithal to like be in a relationship and calm down to a certain extent. She would be the type that your, your kids would accidentally see naked that she would be the type anyways oh and like i always say how come she didn't know about his kids what what is this like y'all want me to say that these episodes are so much better and there's so much character development but these girls ain't asking the real questions they've just been sleeping with these men and being monogamous mentally as to not look at other niggas they don't know anything about these men nothing you didn't know he was in therapy you didn't know he had kids sabrina didn't know this man didn't want to get married anymore and does not want children um whatever dirt about to come out, come out about jordan that might be fake on gary's part but will reveal whatever truth he's been hiding she ain't know and i bet it's gonna be something that she should have known if she was asking relevant questions huh the only person who tends to get more information than not or at least act suspicious when she doesn't know everything is karen i'm sorry guys i know she didn't know everything about aaron but she never trusted aaron 1000 percent. so you can't put that dumbness when it comes to relationship on her the way that it's on them in this respect it's the one thing i'll give karen if she don't know everything she's not gonna fully trust you and you're gonna feel that so i just those the, ridiculous ridiculous okay maybe she knew about the case she didn't know she didn't know what they looked like but i ain't hear him talk about his kids once what is it with these men who are fathers never talking about their kids never never gary never talks about his kids like none of these niggas who have kids talk about their kids i'm i'm over it and then in the previews like andy is like pulling away from jordan for whatever reason oh i forgot to mention but he was talking to andy about jordan and the whatever she's like oh my god he makes me so happy blah 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 like he's he's the first man who she's felt this comfortable with and who she can trust i'm like girl you couldn't trust the nigga who loaned you millions if y'all disrespect preston and robin one more time i'm not watching this show no more because you're not gonna do that if you wanted them to be as bad as you want to characterize them in season seven you should have made them that bad when they were on the show Instead of kicking them to the curb unceremoniously and then talking crap about them after they're gone. I'm not falling for it. Robin really cared about her. You think you think he's too smart to just lend a woman carelessly millions? Carelessly? Come on now. Come on now. Stop stop playing with me. Robin needs to come back quickly because I need him to like come back, air all this stuff out, fix everything and disrespect her in the process i'm i'm with it i'm okay with it i don't i don't mind because we're not gonna act like jordan is better than robin that's not happening he's not better for you andy and he's not better in general at least if they had the old actor for jordan i could i wouldn't agree with the robin slander but i would at least not mind seeing you two on screen anyways thank you guys so much for watching sorry i started screaming there at the end but the disrespect towards robin was so subliminal it's like huh 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 you could have been with yourself in paris too like the only battleship you ever had ma'am was gary so let's not act like there's a barrage of ni okay maybe there are some we don't know about but the two that we saw before gary they were pretty good <laughs> anyways please let me know your thoughts below this was a little bit longer because i want to get more into themes and then episode parts but anyway goodbye my sires susu -soo!